Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour, and I'm joined as always by my lovely, wonderful, wearing a Lakers shirt this time, co-host Alexander Volt. Say hello. Hello. How are people going to know they want a championship if I don't advertise it? I don't know. Maybe because maybe, maybe uh, of all the riots in LA, possibly? That was one day, and all those people are idiots. <laughs> what, year, what year is that shirt from? 2020, dog. Oh, it's this oh, year. Oh, that's this year. This year. Look at you. <laughs> this is every, every album. Remember the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. That's a new discography, more or less per episode. And today we are talking about Stormtroopers of Death. S-O-D. A- S-O-D. Before we get into any of that, if you'd like to support us, please subscribe on youtube.com slash every album ever. Although, I really hate YouTube, and I'm I am waiting for the moment <laughs> to get off YouTube. I am not happy with YouTube and their weird censorship things that they're doing a lot lately. Oh man, uh, deleting accounts without warning. Uh, I wonder if they're going to get mad at us for for putting this in the beginning of the video. Maybe if if this gets silenced, I will clip this, put it on Instagram, and you'll know why. Uh, but you can still subscribe on there for some reason if you want. Uh, also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the places you get. Your podcast stuff, leave reviews, you know, five star ratings or whatever you want. Anything that'll help us get noticed by anyone else, tell your friends, all that good stuff. You can follow me on Instagram at Pope Jesse Ventura and Alex at Mother Puncture. If you want to stay up to date with the artist that we are currently covering, I post uh, a story of that particular artist. Um, yeah, so if you want to send in DM- DMs, uh, emails, suggestions for artists you, you can send all your feedback to every album ever at gmail.com uh there will be unlike the last episode a spotify playlist on sod there should be a link in the description of where you're listening or watching there's a playlist associated with i'm not going to say every episode anymore because it's not that's every episode. true sam hain Sawin from last week's episode did not have a playlist because there was nothing streaming of that band and but, this, is, this is probably going to be a Drive Like Jehu playlist where it's just a full album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so there will be more or less a playlist. Uh, we have playlists associated with every other episode for the most part. Uh, you can find those at everyomember.com. Uh, you can follow Alex directly on Spotify if you just want to cut out the episode entirely because we do get annoying. But SOD, otherwise known as Anthrax with a very New Yorker, a yes. very New Yorker on vocals instead of. Uh, whoever joey belladonna belladonna <laughs> he's like the main and they have like another guy they're like two other guys i think yeah well the first guy it's funny uh since we're talking about anthrax the first anthrax singer neil turbin he was he was saying on the first album which i hate the first uh, Anth- yeah. anthrax album it's an awful album uh th- that guy oh dude he sucks like i remember he he had this band called oh man what are they called Death Riders? It's not, maybe not Death Riders, but it's like a really, I'm going to look it up. Actually, I'm very curious. So it, it was like an, it was like a dad band. It was, it was a band of old guys. Neil Turbin. Here we go. Uh, they were around, uh, I can, I don't know how long they had been around, but I was a teenager and mm-hmm. they were still playing around. And Neil Turbin was the singer of this, this band. And De- it is Death Riders. Oh my God. The name of the band is Death Riders. Jesus Nailed Christ. It. It's an awful name. And it was like, you know, a new wave of British heavy metal type band, but except in 2010, which is like a really tacky we- thing. Yeah. And the guitar player was full on. What's the guitar player in Queen? What, what's that guy's name? Oh, Brian May. Yeah. With the giant yeah. perm. Yeah. He was looked like that. Dang. And it's, it, and they were total douchebags. Like Neil Turin was a real standoffish. Uh, I'm a rock star type singer. Uh, kind of coasted on the fact that he sang on one Anthrax album. Yeah. And he's playing, and he's playing at these danky, not even clubs, they're like little dive bars in Boyle Heights and shit. And total douchebag. Anyway, that's my little <laughs> anecdote about <laughs> Anthrax. <laughs> Sorry, just talk about SOD. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't really have any history with it. Uh, I've never been too into them. Really? Or anthrax. I was big into them in my teens. Yeah. Big and I am a I this, love SOD. This is a perfect teenage boy band. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh indeed. It it fits. Um it's it's kind of interesting to me the legacy they've 
like carved out for themselves mm-hmm. essentially on on one album pretty much pretty much yeah and uh yeah i think that that speaks to um how much people like that it's fun as hell it's it's super fun it's over the top it's silly every song is a joke but it's a uh, it's like also it was really fun too because i started listening to them at a time when i was barely getting into now I, I listened to metal since I was a little kid, but I got out of it and I got really absorbed into hardcore punk. Yeah. And it was my way of getting back into metal. So it was actually three albums that made me get back into into metal as an entire genre Mm -hmm. in my teens. It was uh, Holy War by Fearless Iranians from Hell. Fucking wonderful album. Uh, Rain and Blood by Slayer. And this and uh, speak English or die or speak English or die by SOD. It was these three albums that made me like, okay, I like metal again. That's a very interesting trio you got there. It's because they were all real. They had each of those albums have a ton in common with hardcore punk. They're like they're they're not full on crossover albums. I mean, SOD I think is yeah, and Fear of Serenity from Hell definitely was, but Slayer not really. Uh, so but it, it still had the sensibilities where it was like really fast, really short songs. So it's like the perfect gateway drug. If mm-hmm. you're only into punk and you're trying to get into metal, those, these are the best albums for that. Yeah. Trying to get back and do it. Uh, yeah. And there's definitely uh, an attempt to bridge the gap with stormtroopers of death here. Uh, but yeah, like you said, overtly over the tops, satire, joke songs, yes. extremely New York. The most New York band we've covered, I would say. Until, well, I don't know, Beast, Beastie Boys? Beastie Boys, no, never mind. Beastie Boys is the most New York. Yeah. These guys are second most New York. Yeah, you, um, the singer, when he, when he talks, you just, like, Billy Milano. Yeah. Oh, so Brooklyn. Hey, Billy Milano. <laughs> exactly. That sounded more telling than Brooklyn, but for sure. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> but, uh. So yeah, it's made up of uh, Billy Milano. Who? What did he do before SOD? You know, was I, it like anything at all? I feel like it was nothing. But aside from him, Scott Ian, uh, Dan Liker, I think is his name. Yes. And Charlie. I want. I always want to say Bennett, but I I not. almost wanted to say Bennett as well. It's not. What is it? Uh, I'm looking it up as we speak. Okay. Uh, backtracking, Billy. Yeah, he didn't do anything before, before SOD. And it's uh, how the fuck do you say that? Benanti, 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 Charlie Benanti. Jesus Christ, I don't know my my Anthrax members. Sorry, I I don't either. I actually do. Here's the thing about it, because eventually we'll cover Anthrax, but they're still pretty active. Um, I liked Anthrax as a teen. I I mean, it's clear that they're not like. If you're gonna pick one to of the big four to not like it's going to be anthrax of course uh clearly but actually for me i would you who would you pick megadeth you pick megadeth as the weakest yeah i don't completely I, that might disagree. be some blasphemy but here's the thing i i really love three megadeth albums and i think that's probably consensus that they have three really good albums. Mm-hmm. maybe four if you want to count the 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 one that they did in the 90s. I don't fucking remember what it's called. Uh, Countdown to Extinction? Is that what it's called? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the other I one think people, people like. count that one. I think so. I don't. But, uh, <laughs> but Rust in Peace, one of the greatest thrash metal albums of all time. And then uh, Peace Cells has its, has its moments for sure. And I like the first album. But Anthrax, I, man, they got Among the Living, which is great. All right. I do like Spreading the Disease. It's super hair metal, though, mm-hmm. which is probably blasphemy also. Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't really give a lot of the later stuff a first shot. I think uh, time is pretty good, but it's been a long time. You know, I can't judge. I do like Anthrax more as guys than as a band. For yes, sure. they are so, like, I can't imagine anyone doesn't like Scott Ian. He's he great. just seems like one of the nicest dudes. He 100% has to be. I remember listening to uh, him on uh, Mark Barron's podcast years ago. And he, I was just like, man, I want more of this dude. This dude is the best. He actually did a lot of uh, like talking shows, spoken word, like Henry Rollins type shows. Okay. Storytelling shows, more or less. Uh, and then he, he filmed one of them. And it's him telling stories 
all over, you know, about all the touring and a lot of stuff with Dimebag Daryl, which are fucking hilarious. Great yeah. stories. Uh, Dimebag Daryl was amazing in his lifetime. He was an <laughs> asshole. He was hilarious. He was, he was a prankster. But I hate the way it was shot. It was like shot in Sweden, somewhere in Scandinavia. I don't remember exactly. And I don't think the mic, the audience was mic'd. So it sounded like he was bombing when he wasn't. Like okay. he, it was really funny. It was really entertaining. I highly recommend whatever the fuck it's called. I'm such a bad... I didn't do any research for this episode. No, <laughs> I did no, no research for this episode. It's all based on memory, but... Uh, yeah, Scotty and super likable. Anthrax as a, as a whole, I think, is probably the most likable of the big four. Pro- mean, the most approachable. Like, yeah. Like, you, you probably want to hang out with Anthrax before... Yeah, like, you think about Metallica and Slayer as being party guys and, uh, you know, fun guys all around, but none were as lighthearted and laughy as yes. anthrax yes i'd hang out with anthrax and then kurt hammett and then it's deba- mean kurt hammett. yeah yeah sorry <laughs> and then it's debatable who i want to hang out with after that from the big yeah big four. hey man yeah i don't know either i don't fucking know who cares but <laughs> uh scotty another way but okay so srd side project clearly we just keep talking about anthrax uh, why and how and who and when and what? So this was done after spreading the disease, mm-hmm. and uh, Ian created you know the Sergeant D character, mm-hmm. um, he, mascot like kind of like a kind of like their Eddie, yeah, like their Eddie. Um, and yeah, it's it's kind of interesting to. Because I feel like they could have done this as Anthrax. I don't think anybody else would have worked. I like Billy Milano on vocals. No one else could have worked. I mean, okay, that's not true. Joey Belladonna would not have worked on that's vocals. That's true. The I, high pitch. Yeah. I don't want fucking Joey Belladonna on these songs. Yeah. I just don't want. It's. Uh, I mean, I like Joey Belladonna. I think he's cool. I think he's yeah. a good singer. Uh, but boy, is he not a. Uh, super heavy fucking he does not have the attitude there's that no, Billy yeah, has. There's no gruffness, there's no snarl, there's it's uh, you know, it's it's what it is. It's cool for what it is, but but uh they recorded a 63 song demo <laughs> called Crab Society North. I don't know if you listened to it. I did, I, I didn't know it existed. I think I, I stumbled across it. A lot of the songs are just like 10 second songs. That's yeah. why it's like 63 right. songs. So, uh, yeah, off of that, and I'm sure, you know, with the anthrax clout, they uh, embarked on a uh, studio album. So there's a lot of bands, there were a lot of bands kind of like that in this era where I guess you can call them crossover bands. Anybody who doesn't know, crossover is literally the crossover from hardcore punk to thrash metal mm-hmm. or to death metal, mostly thrash metal, I, I would say. So DRI did it really well. They're one of the few bands who really fucking nailed it. Uh, but a lot of bands try to do that. They, they try to go metal and they ended up just being whack. And a lot of these bands did a thing uh, that SOD does quite a bit. Like the 10 second songs, mm-hmm. absurdly fast. Maybe it's just a blast beat for one bar and then it's over. A lot of bands like Cryptic Slaughter, who I haven't listened to in a very long time, but I remember liking. But it, it's not like a, I don't think it'll, that stuff will hold up because it's, it's really sloppy. It's really a teenager kind of angsty Give me the fastest thing you got yes. at the time, you know? Yes. Uh, bands like that, bands like, I think Macabre. If anybody remembers Macabre, I fucking commend you because no one heard of them even when <laughs> I was listening to them. Uh, like, yeah, bands that are just super crazy for the sake of being super crazy. Uh, <clears throat> really entertaining, super niche. I think that spawned a lot of like grindcore stuff. And then you get the, you know, the, the, the extreme end of anal cunt stuff Mm -hmm. where it's just all 10 seconds and it's all super fast and unlistenable in my opinion yes Uh, but before that before you went to extreme you had sod and a lot of it is real fucking hooky a lot of it's just a good time uh still absurd but whatever oh should i keep talking oh sorry (laughs) i I felt like from there you were gonna go and oh yeah that makes more oh, sense. They got 
See, oh, that's my mind. Sometimes Sorry. we have like a rhythm, and I assume Mike is going to do things. But that uh, time, he, I thought he was going to be like, "So they have three albums." Sorry, that would actually been that would have been a perfect segue. I'm gonna imagine you all imagine that I did that. They have three <laughs> albums. The first one released in 1985. The last one was 2007. But they, it's really, it's really two albums. And even then, there's like fucking mega gaps in between each of them, and there's not. It's not really that it's just it's clearly uh these guys made time to record and play out when they were bored or they had the time yeah or or they missed each other or something uh but also one thing i'm glad about because uh i'm not sure i mean i know anthrax went through a lot a lot of lineup a lot of lineup changes uh but for all three albums consistent Yes. Four members each time. So even if they weren't playing with Anthrax, they still got together for SRD, which is very, very camaraderie very well, I don't think I don't think Charlie and uh Dan uh, or uh Scott ever like they were always Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Charlie and, and Scott were like the the bar, the bottom of uh Anthrax. Yeah, yeah, the the foundation. So yeah, there I don't think those two have ever probably yeah, yeah. that's that sounds about right actually. Um but I guess let us talk about it. This is going to be a short episode anyway, because there's only three albums, but <clears throat> let us begin. This is 1985's Speak English or Die. I did not know this was the uh, Headbangers Ball. I didn't know that either. Theme. Really? Yes. I love this intro. Like, there's nothing quite like this to just really make you want to punch someone in the face. I, I, yeah. Oh, it's great. It's, it's so chuggy, too. It's very crunchy. The first two songs are basically one song. And, yeah, very good opening. If you like thrash metal, you're going to love this band. You have to love this. It's wonderful. I, I wouldn't even, even though like this is typically instrumental, it still doesn't feel right to skip this. It's such a powerful opener. Yeah. It's so great. I fucking love it so much. It's not that long either. And yeah, I feel like I've heard these like, like replicated these riffs in so many other songs. A lot of there's a lot of copycatting going on in the thrash scene. I I was really into thrash. I heard so many bands that no one should ever hear, and so many of them just like, all right, what does thrash sound like? We're gonna make it sound like that. Mm. Whereas these guys, and obviously the big four people like them, invented the genres. They weren't trying to sound like a thrash band. They just had it. They just had it. So funny because uh, Billy is really subdued in that song. Yeah, like that's. I, I was thinking about this today actually uh, about how much of a weak opener that is for him. It's a great song. Also, best personal, obviously. Best personal. I mean, this is gonna be course. a real boring yeah. uh, accolades it, it, episode. I think yeah. For in terms of that, sure, but it's a fun band. It's a fucking great album. I can't believe how much I still love it after all these years. I know it's like over thirty years old. Uh, still love it. Uh, maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit. We've been, it's funny. Every time I've seen SOD songs played live, uh, Mike has been there. That's right. Um, when we saw Lama God, Anthrax and Death Heaven after Lama God set the, uh, Charlie and Ian came out right. and they did SOD songs. Yeah. That was super fun. That and, was super fun. And then when we saw Mr. Bungle, mm-hmm. they did uh, Speak English or Die, but it's Speak Spanish or Die, yep. which is a nice twist. It's a cute twist, yeah. Yeah, it's obviously a satirical song meant to um, 
like back in the day, there was that book, The Ugly American, you know, very mm-hmm. much in in vain of that. Yeah. Yeah. That. So the, the title track, man, I love that song. The, the lyrics are fucking hilarious. They're they're so over the top. They're so racist. It's fucking. But it's like, you know, it's obviously satirical. It's very like the whole album is like that. It's full of really harsh jokes that it's like it feels so New York and it feels like so like. I don't know, there's, there's no uh, cushion in any of it. I love it. I think it's very, it's, it's juvenile. It's quote unquote offensive by today's standards, but I think it's just wonderful. I, I think the reason it works for me is the, the context of the, the Sergeant D character is, you know, like he's, he's an idiot. He's the, yeah. you know, the ugly American. Yeah. And uh, that's why it works for me, because yeah. Plus, it's also in the in the same vein. Like, they're all like that. I mean, kill, first of all, kill yourself. Fucking amazing. I oh, love that song. Dude, that song is so fast. I'm sitting there with the lyrics, and I still couldn't follow it. I mem- I know all the lyrics of that yeah. song by heart. <laughs> I was singing along to it in the car <laughs> today. <laughs> I I fucking love that song. And I mean, like, just to go back to, to the point, like, uh. Any song telling someone to kill himself is very is, fu- is funny to me, especially when it's written like that. Yeah, it's so fucking it's it, great lyrics. What's I it? think I think we've done a, that song. You know, is uh, addressed to Tipper Gore, who had like the PMRC and was trying to censor everything. Yeah, I think we've covered other bands who maybe like Dead Kennedys and Body Count have like beef with her. Yeah, like and at, Merciful Fate, right? Yeah, yeah. It almost any metal band, any any hip hop, like the everyone hated the PMRC. It was, yeah, yeah. It's fucking what? Any kind of censorship? YouTube is fucking <laughs> awful. Like, just, uh, I mean, are we are we allowed to say things or are we not? And especially if it's in in uh, on the quote unquote art form, if you're fucking making a song, what's I mean, if you're gonna censor songs and shit, like, go fuck yourself. Uh, what else is amazing about this album? What else? What isn't amazing about this fucking album? So it, it, this is the only thing by them I feel like where most of the jokes land pretty fucking well. Yes. Like, uh, what's that noise? Is it, I cackle every time I fucking hear it, just because uh, Billy's performance on there is so believable. Because it's, it's the most. That's when you know this is uh, a New York guy. So New York. It's so fucking New York, and he's screaming. Put on no, put on that song. It, it's like it can't be. <laughs> given justice by my stupid fucking explanation. What the fuck is that? What the fuck? Hey Alex, what the fuck is that noise? What the fuck is going on here? Charlie, don't no, 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 no. What's going on over here? Man, what, what so it goes on for like another 30 seconds or something of him just losing his shit because they keep playing the song and the noise won't stop yeah it's hilarious it's i fucking love it i feel like i like random songs on here um they're all random yeah, like uh, chromatic death, just killer guitar playing. Yeah, by Ian on there. That's uh, another thing. Um, uh, Ian, you never hear him play lead guitar because he's Mister Rhythm. Yeah, and he's one of the fucking best rhythm guitarists in all of metal. But you never hear him so. And then on United Forces, which is a great song, very sing alongable, fucking anthemic or anthemic, makes you want to just like kick someone's head in when you listen to it. He his solo on there. Is real fucking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish I had a timestamp. I don't. I mean, the songs are so short. Second half of the song, whatever. Yeah. Uh, good ass song. I like, uh, you know, it's a, a song to unify punks and metalheads, which I don't think is an issue anymore. Maybe, maybe if you're in high school. If you're, yeah, if you're a kid, uh, I'm sure, yeah, there's a lot of songs like that in, in the 80s. You hear a lot about even uh, a song that they would cover later on. Songs by Agnostic Front, a lot of yeah. a lot of those bands are like, let's unite, it's us against them. Like, shut up, you yeah. kids, you're not gonna make any change. You're gonna grow up and you're gonna get bored, and you're gonna move on, and you're gonna get a job. But but yeah, I'm all for the uh no rednecks, no jocks, no macho bullshit attitudes. And it forces can't be stopped. I feel like it's this that's all metal. 
these days. Oh, rednecks and jocks? Yeah. I mean, it is a very middle of the country kind of thing, too. Or very male thing in general. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of macho by default. Yeah, you're not going to. There's you, uh, there's some irony there, but. You find, you find a girl who likes men, and I'll find you someone with problems. Although I would like to be friends with her. Um, what? Okay, so. Songs like Premenstrual Princess Blues, which is ridiculous. I actually think it's still pretty funny. It's it's Billy doing like a fake, like a faux girl like voice. Like king, doing his best King Diamond kind of, impression yeah, I wrote supposed, down. Supposed to be a, yeah, pretty much. It's supposed to be, put on that motherfucker. It's supposed to be him just uh, being like a girl in a period. But the song itself is fucking great. You get a lot of that where it's like comedy jokey stuff but it's still really fucking solid though yeah it's still, that's a great hook <laughs> it doesn't even sound silly i mean it's a little silly but it still works it sounds silly to me but it's because like his voice is so naturally gruff that him doing a girl voice is almost more masculine than, than a King Diamond or a fucking yeah. Joy Belladonna. Yeah, good song, good fucking song. Uh, before that, one of my favorite tracks. I I think Milk is just so much fun. It's fantastic. Hey guys, can you put that bitch on too? Sure, why yeah. not? We have all the time in the world. Because, uh, also, yeah. Great riff. That's what I mean. This. Simple. Simple, but it's. Drumming on this track is. Oh, fucking incredible. Great. But it's like. You don't need to be full on death metal with a million ribs to really, really drive a point. Yeah. Yeah, like, this shit. So that's why it's, I really feel a lot of the hardcore punk uh, kind of mentality here. It's very simple, very aggressive, but just way heavier. Like that. What the fuck? For, for 1985? Holy it's shit. It's intense. Yeah. yeah. The song is called Milk. It's about him eating cereal. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> God damn. So good. So damn good. And then even like Pussy Whip. Great. Pussy whip. Great. Dude, that intro is. Put on the intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's just us playing the full album. <laughs> I know. How much more metal of an intro does, could you even. I know. This could be a Metallica yeah. song. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, uh, Metallica was playing a Danny Elfman song. Yeah. Yeah, these, these take me back to Big 16 so vividly. <laughs> Holy shit. I didn't listen to it when I was, uh, a six, but like, I very much got that vibe. Oh yeah. Very much got that vibe listening to this. Yeah, this was like. A band that I covered a lot, I think. Um, not in like any real band of mine. Not that any of my bands are that real, but mm-hmm. like I mean, like when we ever there'd be like a fucking set of instruments, and I'd just jump on drums, and we just start playing fucking, you know, whatever the fuck, Milano Mosh or something. Milano Mosh. Speaking of which, it's like almost military sounding. Those drums are fucking fantastic. It's just I don't know why this album works so much. <clears throat> uh, it's. I think because we were talking about it earlier, it's it's the Mel Brooks of uh, comedy metal albums to it, me. It's 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 funny. There's jokes, but it's done with uh, with skill. Yeah, and it's not just let's. It's very self aware. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then to me, like the funniest thing on is the ballad of Jimi Hendrix. Of course, of course, it is, and we're gonna play the whole song. Yeah, because. You'll see. You'll see. And there we go. And there we go. Yeah, it's just like. <laughs> yeah, you're, <laughs> if so you're looking, good. if you're just looking at the song titles, you think like maybe you're gonna get like a Hendrix tribute 
And I, you, you do. You do. You definitely do. But it's five seconds. That's kind of like what we did for Jimi Hendrix. It's yeah. essentially what we did <laughs> to his fucking legacy. We shat all over Jimi Hendrix, episode 15. Um, that's, yeah, like th- that song is like the end of three consecutive five second long songs. Uh, Diamonds and Rust. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, sen- sec- it's sandwiched in between. That's right. Uh, yeah, uh, anti procrastination, anti procrastination song and diamonds and rust, literally just one riff, one time, and then it's over. Which is again, there's no reason for them to exist. Just it's ridiculous. It's it's a complete joke. But yeah, it's weird. It's it's not filler for the sake of filler. It's just a quick yeah. like. It's it's appropriate for thrash metal because it moves fast. It's, so why yeah. not have these five second songs? It's yeah, that, go ahead. Oh, that aren't like it's not like a uh, like a an anal cunt thing where it's like oh we'll have five seconds so- like five mini- after after it's this in there enough because like filler implies that you're filling up space if it's five seconds and there's three five second songs it's not filling up much space yeah in fact it's kind of going out of your way to make sure it doesn't fill up space like man. And the way it flows too, like I, I thought, I, I, what I, I thought going back to it was that I probably, because this happens a lot when I go back to albums that I loved as a, as a youth, that I bet it starts out strong and then the ending is kind of like so so, but I just remember it falling because this, the beginning was so strong. Mm-hmm. And then I was listening to it and I was like, yeah, this is probably what it is. And then it kept going. I was like, no, nah, the second half is fucking badass too. This whole album is. It's short, it's tight, it, it's, uh... it's under 30 minutes, it goes by real fast. It's exactly this. If you don't want fucking heavy, fast, short song thrash, there's nothing for you here. Yeah. But if you do, it's it's the best. It's the fucking best. It's, um, yeah, usually with iconic metal albums, I feel like there's some crossover appeal. Mm -hmm. And besides with the the punk genre, like there's nothing Mm -hmm. mainstream about this. Mm -hmm. It is just beloved based on the, the uh the what am i looking for here merit on um, yeah the merits and the the mm. skill of it so good stuff wonderful stuff uh no no joke album has any business being this fucking great but it is i'm glad i still love it after all these years uh please listen to it and if you want to skip the rest of the episode fuck you listen to the rest of the episode <laughs> but also listen to this album for sure it's going to be in a link in the, wherever you're listening or watching but both of our best personal favorites. That is unanimous amongst the world, I feel like. Uh, and with good reason. So let's move on to the album that no one talks about so much. This is 1999's Bigger Than the Devil. Almost like a different band now. Completely. Same dudes. Yeah. But this does not sound like SRD. It's great because it doesn't sound like 1999 to me. It's still very metal. Yeah, it sounds like 1991. Yeah, there's some some Pantera, some Sepultura influences, I would Speaking say. Speaking of which, Billy sounds like fucking Max Cavalera on this song. Yeah. Or, like, on most of the album. Yeah, his vocals are good. Completely. That's Max. That's Sepultura's Max. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I think it sounds pretty good. I don't like it as much, like even remotely, as much as I did before, but I think it's a cool sound. I would agree with that. So, where are we at with this album, Alex? So, as someone who uh, hasn't really put this band on a pedestal, I think it's it's good. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. It's it's bigger. It's angrier. It's meaner. Is it better? Probably not. Yeah, it's probably not. Definitely not. But it's still very listenable. Um, there's still SOD qualities on it. Mm-hmm. It's just not the same. 
least favorite. So whoa, yeah, this one it didn't. Whoa, here's the here's why. Okay, it didn't, it didn't enrage me. Didn't enrage me. Didn't really like. I was. I mean, I was let down compared to the first album. This is not at all the first album or anything like it, which is good because like you can't recreate that that kind of thing, especially mm-hmm. uh, fucking fourteen years later. However, it it is it does a little bit of what you you mentioned with the anal cunt thing whereas there are so many short songs and there are so many songs there's like 25 tracks and it's not a short album it's like it's it's weird 40 minutes is usually a short album but i think it's pushing it for this it really is you you yeah. need 25 to 30 it, that, yeah I was, that, that extra 10 minutes does hurt it it is surprisingly 10 minutes is a lifetime when there's like 12 songs in 10 minutes yes so like three quarters of the way through my first listen to this, I thought, and I actually wrote it down somewhere in my pile of notes. Uh, I'm not going to remember a single song after of, of, on this album after I'm done with this. There's no chance. There's no chance I'll remember a single song. And for the most part, after a couple of listens, uh, I really don't like, because with an album that has this many songs and especially this many short songs, what really sticks with you is the first half, at least mm-hmm. the first half mostly like the first five tracks for five or six track tracks. And I think that's uh, open to debate, obviously, but I think that's for a lot of albums. You got to start strong. You got to start with something that's going to sink in. Uh, and this one, aside from that opening track, the, the, the title track, uh, oh man, it rubs me the wrong way immediately. Like I like the blasting sections of the crackhead song, mm-hmm. but the rest of it don't care for it. And then immediately after that is kill the assholes. And I don't, I don't care for that song either. <laughs> so it's like, man, you're, I'm the things that I'm supposed to remember from an album with a million songs. I'm already forgetting because I don't care for them. So you get to songs that are okay. Yeah. That, like I think, uh, I can't even read it. Fucking um, school bus. I think it's pretty, pretty badass, but it's like Sc- a, it's school, a second long. The, if taken out of context, the lyrics for school bus can be brutal. Many of these songs taken out of context. Yes, many yeah. of them, but specifically that one. Give me, give it, give us a little in context. Uh, I, did, I didn't write them down, and I'm not going to say them. You can look them up yourselves. Retarded. How many times did they say it? I don't even know. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but they say worse. Uh, uh, I will say uh, something people might find offensive is uh, I forgot to say on the title track. I like he's when he says, uh, "I'm bigger than the devil," combined with Schindler's List. Yeah. That's fucking hilarious. That's pretty fucking funny. That's pretty funny. Uh, also, uh, King at the King. Oh, King Diamond or in Burger King. Fucking great visual. Uh, great yeah. visual. And it's also like, I really dig that uh, that black metal double picking mm-hmm. section that they have on there. I think it's very cool. It's something they don't do kind of ever again. And uh, I like Make Room, which if you're, if you're listening casually, you'll think it's racist. Not. It's just, it's kind of like what Bilber says, kill everyone. Make yeah, some, make some room. Yeah, and um, I feel like make room ties in with uh, like Black War, where they uh, what the few times they do get serious, they'll they'll talk about climate change. So if you think people are killing the planet naturally, you want or not naturally, but right. but in the over the top metal sense, there's you're killing the planet. People need to die. Yeah, something like that for sure. Um. <clears throat> I think Celted Frosted Flakes also pretty funny. Celtic Frosted Flakes or Celtic Frosted Flakes, or but Kel- they're yeah. from New York, so they're saying they say Celtic. That I wish I didn't hate the song because it's legit funny. It's yeah. very funny. It's like so it's a uh, whatever happened to, to to Celtic Frost, and they work in like all the album titles. Yeah, and I feel like we did our homework for we covered. <laughs> it, it's funny it's well done yeah it's, lyrically it's well if, done if, and funny yeah if you know the band you uh might like the song because mike didn't yeah <laughs> charlie don't cheat that's this charlie's drumming on full display there mm-hmm. uh great great drumming track and then i uh, man for some reason i know shenanigans I think my friends Chandler and Christian would listen to it. Really? I hate that song. Interesting. I, it bothered me. It felt, it felt almost, I mean, the, the, the riff itself, the main hook really feels like a, a generic hooker punk riff. Like 
it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know. It's, it's all fast. It's all aggressive. It's all has that energy to it, but it can, it can run together. It, especially at the, this run time. It really does. Uh, and I'm, I'm only noting like a few cause of so many fucking songs. Uh, some of them really stand out in a way that I don't think I like, but it's at least funny or at least fun rather not funny. Uh, what the hell is the name of that song? The fucking Frankenstein song. <laughs> Um, Frankenstein uh, and his horse. Uh, it, could you put that on? I mean, uh, yes, because they have time still. But yeah, by the way, everyone listening, this is not streaming that we're we're doing a YouTube, but this is that song. Frankenstein and his horse. Frankenstein and his This kind of reminds me of something the Melvins would do. Later on, right? Because they have some like jokey songs. They do. And... Except the Melvins are much better at it. And uh, I mean, I just like the Melvins more. That's, maybe. that's it. That's the song. That's the <laughs> song, everybody. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff like that. Maybe not as silly jokey as that, but as short as novel as that. Uh, there's. <laughs> yeah, so, there, there's there's really no way to like. Yeah. So, okay. Definitely what you said, they'll run together and very few really stand out as good or bad, which is why it's my least favorites. Cause like so much of it's like, I just, I'm going to forget this even existed. Only a few, I already mentioned the ones that I like, you know, school bus, King of the King, uh, make room. Uh, they cover, aren't you hungry from MOD, which is Billy Milano's other band. Okay. So have you ever heard MOD? No, I know it was like created as like, obviously similar to, MOD SOD. Yeah. So MOD, I think it's actually method of destruction. Uh it was the first album that came out came out very shortly after speaking with your die, I think. Uh I don't know too many details about that. I know the album. I've heard it. It's not as good, I don't feel like, uh, as the SOD album. It's more metal. It's it's less crossover, longer songs. Uh and Aren't You Hungry is the opening track on that album. It's a good ass song. Not as good as the ori- this cover's not as good as the original, I don't feel like. Uh, and it's also kind of weird, like, what I mean, it seems it just seems like an unnecessary cover, unless he's trying to promote MOD or something. But they do have a lot of albums. Yeah, that's like a, that's like his full time thing. Uh, but it's a it's a good song regardless. Uh, but uh, also, I just found out I didn't know the song uh, La- Latchkiss or or Latchkith. Uh, where where what track, track is that? Twenty two. <laughs> Oh, it's L A T K C H. Looks like an abbreviation. It is. It stands for limp against the corn chamber head. So obviously anti new metal. Oh, corn with a K. With a K. Limp is in limp biscuit, cold chamber, head P E. Ah, uh, interesting. Well, as much as I do understand that, we have to mention corn in every episode. We do. Therefore, that is our corn reference of the day. Also, I just discovered I had no idea when I was listening to it that yeah, it was I like an anti flew over my head completely. new metal song. Uh you know what? Put it put it on right actually. Maybe Maybe we'll we'll catch up on something. Yeah. Help us solve this in real time. <laughs> Sounds like he's mocking some kind of Fred Durst situation there. Yeah. That's mocking Donna Davis. <laughs> so that blew. So like, <laughs> that's what I mean. It's a lot of songs like that where it's just like one riff played for like, I don't know, like, uh, let's just do this rhythm for like eight seconds. Also, like, with something like, and they have a few more ballads for other singers on here. Uh, like, Ballad of Jimi Hendrix, like, the joke is that ballads are long and epic, and they just played a quick riff and, and said he was dead. Like, that song, what was, I don't... Hulk, okay, so, I don't ballad, get, ballad, yeah, ballad of Jimi Hendrix is a good joke. It's a funny joke. It lands. It's a... Yeah. And then they decided to make it a series with the same punchline. Yeah. Which is... Exactly how you ruin a joke. So like oh, on it's, here, it's very much like a Austin Powers thing where it was funny the first two times, but now it's just like, yes, we know. 
Yeah, like yeah. If if you're literally reusing the same setup and punchline, the setup is the name of the song, and then the punchline is saying you're dead. Mm-hmm. That's set up the set up punch. They have the ballad of Michael H and the ballad of Phil H. I'm assuming Phil Hartman and Michael who? Uh, the NXS. I N. NXS. Yeah. Uh, I don't know his fucking name. Um, but ba- yeah, basically it's it's. The both of those are dead, and one of them is the song, and the other one is the fucking Simpsons theme. And again, they cut it short, and they say you're dead. Like that. Yeah, we heard that. We heard that. That's the joke. Yeah. And the fact that they're on here, I think put the nail in the coffin for me. Okay, least favorite. Like, I don't know, man. It just seems. I get it. I get it. From like you're hanging out with your buddies. It's an inside joke. It's a recurring inside joke. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't land. It's literally, I mean, it, it, I keep saying the word literally. <laughs> I'm getting annoyed myself. <laughs> we'll fucking stop. Yeah. Take over. <laughs> I quit. Yeah. I, you know, as like I said, as someone who's uh, not a purist, it, uh, it has its problems, but it's still, I think, if you want more of it, um, it's not, it's not awful in my opinion. No. It's, it's totally different. Um, so that's that's yeah. Again, everything you're saying is dude not awful. It's fine. It's it's it's, all, it's like parts of it are close to death metal. It has that production to it. Billy Milano sounds really rough and uh, rough in a good way. Like gruff, probably use that word. Uh, so the reason why it's least favorite ultimately, first album, extremely fun, extremely memorable. This one, not that fun. No, com- what's the opposite of memorable i don't remember a single forgettable f- forgettable some would say i don't remember a single <laughs> fucking out- song on this it's not that it's bad it's just i don't remember it, anything it's just uh, listening to it like not back to back but listen to it once mm-hmm. waiting a day and let's do it again it's like i heard it for the first time twice that's mm-hmm. how that's what that's what i'm trying to say uh so in that sense it's fun but i'm not yeah not for me yeah and uh that's about all we can milk out of that indeed they would break up in 2003 because of disagreements between Ian and Billy. So they were like touring at this during that whole time. I don't know how it works. No, it was kind of like on and off. Like I think according to Wikipedia, they played, you know, in support of the album then there's a big break and they played in 92 where they did live in Budokai Budokan album um, get together 97 99 and this these like sporadic mm, that sounds about right yeah but I've, nothing like official until 2003 when they were like we're done that's funny to me too because like for a band that never well barely recorded rarely toured they still had disagreements and still broke up. Yes. That's funny to me. That's yeah. Shit. Um, yeah. There's a quote from Ian on the Wikipedia where he's like, you know, it went on way longer than it should have. Honestly, that's a one and done band. How yeah. the hell did you even get a second album out of that? So yeah, he's this like the fact that there's two albums and an EP worth of songs is. Yeah. Be fucking grateful. Everybody. Yeah. That's basically it. Uh, but we're down to the last album, which is more of an EP than, a, than an album, but whatever. It's, you'll, you can find it streaming. This is 2007's Rise of the Infidels. But you have to look it up separately from Apple, you pieces of shit. This is the fourth episode in a row we just shout out Apple Music. Now they've gone full hate for you. This is early 2000s punk. I do not like this song at all. Alright, I think we get the idea. Yeah, there's no like SOD. 
qualities there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my worst. Obviously, worst. Yeah. Uh, least favorite. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is an EP attached with a live album. Didn't know that going in. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the the EP. What are the tracks? For the uh, the first four tracks stand up and fight. Uh. Um, I'm blanking. Oh, oh, uh, Java, Java Amigo. Amigo, uh, United and Strong and Ready to Fight. Uh, the latter two are covers. Briefly mentioned Agnostic Front uh, earlier. United and Strong is from Agnostic Front, and uh, Ready to Fight is from Negative Approach. Both New York bands, I believe. Uh, I was a big fan. I was a fan of both of them in my youth. No, no, no. Uh, Negative Approach is from uh, Detroit. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> I was a fan of both of them when I was younger, but I really like Negative Approach. Like I was a big Negative Approach fan, and I'm assuming anybody listening to this doesn't know who that is. I'm assuming you don't, you didn't hear of uh, them. I actually have amazing, I, yeah. Um, familiar with both those bands. I think I might have even seen Agnostic Front mm-hmm. at like a random. Do we have a bar slash venue in downtown called the Redwood or something? Yeah, yeah. Redwood Bar and Grill. Yeah. That's where I saw Agnostic Front for really? whatever reason. Interesting. That's a, I, I've heard horrible things about the, the management of that place. Well, horrible they, things. They let Agnostic Front play. So. That's true. There, so <laughs> Agnostic Front is one of those uh, super New York, New York hardcore uh, skinhead, but like united and strong. They're literally trying to like bring the scene together and like, you know, inclusiveness and all that. Uh, I didn't love most of this stuff. I like their first album a lot. Mm. Uh, of course, I fucking forgot what it's called. It's been a long time. But Negative negative, uh, sorry, uh, negative Approach, the song they cover is Ready to Fight. I love that song as a kid. Uh, it's, what's, huh? Oh, uh, what's your uh, two cents on the cover, though? The cover? It's just a cover. <laughs> it's so both, straightforward. Both of the covers are just it's these guys playing the song exactly the way the song goes. I like the originals better, clearly. Uh, and I also feel like we're never going to mention Negative Approach ever again. So listen to their first EP. It's very strong. Maybe I haven't heard it in like 15 years, but uh, <laughs> it was neat to hear, hear them again, or at least hear someone cover that. Someone cover them. <clears throat> but yes, because it is basically two new songs and then a live album, which I don't even think it sounds good. It sounds off. It's uh, badly recorded. Yeah. What, do you know what you're it's from I couldn't find a year on it. Interesting. So it was I, record, I mean, it's obviously re- recorded in Seattle because they keep mentioning that. Yes, in the, in like they do the ballad of Nirvana. I'm gonna and, give everyone one guess as to what that song went like. The ballad yeah, of Nirvana, and it like segue. Put, put it on. Put it on. Segways into March. Uh, here we go. All right, you people ready? I said, Seattle, are you ready? We are SOD! That's hilarious. The the the, the signing yeah. off and saying good night is hilarious. It's your first song. It's, it's the first yeah. song. That's yeah. funny as fuck. The the repeating of the same setup punch of ballad of whatever and then you're dead. I think it works better live because the, yeah, the crowd is gonna eat it up and it's it's a little live is is a little looser it's, than an album. Exactly. So I don't mind the the ballad shit here on the live album. Mm-hmm. I it pissed me off on the on the on the bigger than the devil because it's like it's you're just doing the same thing but with a different person here it's it, you could uh the way they did here tailor it to the city whoever's yes. famous in that city do it on, that's perfect it's a perfect it, live joke yeah makes sense it doesn't even matter that it has the same punchline it, here I am talking about comedy like I fucking know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, I'm an idiot but it's not the point it works that's what I'm saying it, it, I liked it on the live album uh however it's uh, this is like an obvious worst but it's not even a bad listen. Like the quality of the live stuff is complete garbage, but it's still fun. You hear how much fun these guys have together. Uh, and I they, think that that stuff translates pretty well. They basically just play the whole f- first album. Yeah. You'll notice very few songs from the second album. Some would say even none from the second album. Yes. <laughs> because there's, I mean, 
they know what they're about. They're not like they're the smart guys. They understand like, yeah, this is we just we're, we're having fun anyway. Clearly, this album is better. We're going to play stuff off that album. Uh, but the- also, I think they they knew this was like this was the last legs like this. Give the people what they want. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't fun, they wouldn't be doing it. And uh, I think even in the live records, they're saying, like, I think we're having more fun than you guys are having here. Yeah. Like, uh, but for the the studio tracks. I kind of like Java Amigo, kind of because it swings. Well, it's kind of funny. It's too. funny, yeah. I like I like that it, it's swing metal essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, but aside from that, it's like yeah, these don't really. This is kind of like we recorded it. We might as well get it in one package released and then break up. And, also, like the album cover is oh is boy. bad news. Like, dude, there's nothing sod about this. Anyone watching the video, or if you're if you're not watching the video. Uh, just Google the Rise of the Infidels cover. This looks like a generic metal band. Dude, it looks like, like, uh, <laughs> like, a, like a school project when you're you're just trying to learn how to use a computer for the first time and you use graphic imaging. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, here's this template. Do this. It's really rough. It's really rough. Um, <clears throat> but cl- yeah, this I think that was the the deal with this. Right? It's like, oh, okay, we're just gonna get this out there and we're we're done. This is the last thing ever. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Ian and Billy like each other. Really? Because yeah, they uh, they posted a video on YouTube recently of mm. performing all all of them, but with Mike Patton doing "Speak Spanish or Die." Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> so is Mike Patton the new Billy Malone? <laughs> yeah, and I, which would you know, we've we've kind of seen that version of it because yeah. Ian's in Mr. Bungle now. Which is a fucking wild turn of events in the universe yes. that uh, Dave Lombardo and Scott Ian are now in Mr. Bungle. Speaking of Mr. Bungle, by the time this releases their new record will have come out. Yes. It's not out right now, but uh, I wish I was more excited for it, honestly. I mean, even even yeah. after uh, seeing them live, they're fun. Here's the thing: it's fun, but it's just thrash. Yeah, and I want my Mr. You Bungle want weird. Be, I want weird for my Mr. Bungle. Okay, and I've heard I've already got over my thrash phase. Like I'm already sure. done with thrash. And as much as I fucking love every member of that band with like a fiery pat, Trace Burns yeah. is my favorite guitar player of all time. Like uh, I love him so much. Also, like Lombardo's in there now. Lombardo, <laughs> Lombardo's finally in a band again, and not like just bumming around, coasting off of like. Misfits or what? Or so I think Misfits. He, he yeah they for the reunions they got Lombardo really yeah to play oh drums. He does he does a lot of shit with he's legacy like, bands. He's like a celebrity guest in everything now. Like he just it's very smart. If you're getting a, if you're getting a metal punk band back together and you can't get your original drummer or you went through multiple right. drummers. This bring on Lombardo, people will love you. Also, Phantomus. I forgot who's yes. <laughs> Phantomus too. Yeah. But uh no, so like the the bungle, I'm like, I'm sure it's gonna be cool, but uh here's a controversial opinion. Very controversial. I love Mike Patton. I think he's I mean he's one of my top five favorite vocalists of all time. I don't like his screams and not screams, I don't like his his like metal singing. Like his, Interesting. his like his shout. His screams are, you know, animalistic and like monsters. Those are cool. Uh it's when he tries to sing like a metal vocalist. Like he, I don't think he does what Billy does as well. As sure. Billy. Yeah. Sure. I, I don't like that style from. Yeah. He's not a uh, traditional. Yeah. He's not like a, a he's not a, a, a yeller really. Mm-hmm. He's more of like the, either the crazy squeals or just a remarkable singer. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, uh, he, he does, that's all he does on the new bungle stuff. So yeah, it's just not, maybe not for me. I'm going to give it a chance. Keep in mind that it has not been released yet and I have not heard it, but <clears throat> Join us for our next episode while we play Six Degrees of Scott Ian. Yeah. Where we disconnect every metal. Or Mark Marin <laughs> was on there as well. Maybe maybe you will just pull famous people out of a hat and try to connect them to Scott Ian. So is Scott Ian the, the musical equivalent to Kevin Bacon? Is that- it might be because, you know, he's done stuff with like Brian Posehn. <laughs> That's right. That's and right. He was like if you're my age MTV and or mostly VH1 had all these like countdown shows of like mm. the best hard rock bands or like 
I love the 80s. And yeah. Scott Ian was on all of them. Smart guy. Smart guy. Smart guy. Uh, so did he like, uh, after Dimebag died, did he like adopt like the long pink goatee thing? Like, all right, that's mine now. All right. I always remembered him with the, I mean, it wasn't pink, but I remember him with like the goatee. Yeah. He's had it for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays it's gigantic and gray. I don't know. Seems like a fun guy. But uh, might as well recap. I mean, it's a very easy short recap. Yes. So for both of us, speaking of or die, best personal favorite, both of us, worst. Worst and, and least, least favorite. favorite. For Alex, that Rise is. Rise of the Infidels. And I personally don't like Bigger Than the Devil. It just feels like a band that I've heard that isn't SOD, uh, that not very memorable, but it's not like, again, it's not bad. Uh, it's, not, not a bad uh, band. It's comedy Sepultura. Kind of. It kind of <laughs> is. You ever listen to Sepultura's early stuff? Yeah, it doesn't sound like Roots. No, it's not a yeah, no, it it's different. I was a big, big fan of early Sepultura, way more than like I didn't even really bother with. That's a band that should be broken up, but isn't there? Yeah, uh, they have. Uh, yeah, uh, I would love to do like a Sepultura. I would episode. love to do Sepultura. Uh, I don't know when the last record they made was, but it's like it's one of those bands. Probably last year. Probably, <laughs> but like the I don't know if you ever heard their very first EP. I forgot what's that like chaos aid no no, no chaos AD is uh, in the nineties. It was oh I'm gonna look it up as we speak. Um because uh not only does it not sound like later Sepulter, it doesn't sound like early Sepulter. It's like this weird anomaly. It is called was it Morbid Vision? Uh, no, no wow, I think it actually was Morbid Visions. Uh let me see. No, 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 no. Uh, Bestial Devastation. That's I've, what it was. I've not heard that. Bestial Devastation. It is damn near black metal. It's like oh. you. Oh, man. I'm going to seek that out. Also, interesting thing. I jokingly said they put out an album last year. Fucking put out an album this year. They, okay. So we're not going to be covering Zappel for a long time. No. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the gist of that. But a band with a lot of fucking range. Of course, we're just talking about. Other bands. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, all right. It's a podcast. Yeah. It's a music podcast. We don't need to be fucking so strict about it. All right. Give us a break. I know no one is telling us that. We're just making, I'm just making this up <laughs> completely projecting. But uh, I guess if you, if you want to wrap it up, you got nothing else to add. I, I don't. I mean, I, it's a fun band. I'm glad to go back to them. Yeah. If you like metal, you like them. That's, that's the gist. Uh, but thank you so much for listening and watching. If you want to support us, subscribe on YouTube while it is still there at <laughs> youtube.com slash every album ever. As well as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you know, tell your friends, leave ratings, reviews, all that. That's a shame. I feel like we're like climbing up. We're steadily increasing steadily. Yeah, we are. Yeah, it's, it's in cool. YouTube. It's so I, I'd be upset if they stopped us. Yeah, that would be a bummer. I uh, can't handle the mega powers. The mega powers, yeah. But if we do something goes wrong with YouTube and we end up having to not, uh, for sure doing a Patreon and there will be videos on there one million percent. Like there'll be like a one dollar tier if you want to donate a dollar a month or some shit. Like yeah. You know, I don't give a fuck about money here. But I mean at the moment I don't. I in the future I definitely will. But uh you can also follow me on Instagram at Pope Jesse Ventura and Alex at Mother Puncture. If you want to stay up to date with the artists that we're currently covering and you can send DMs regarding that artist, or you can send suggestions for others. Email everything you want to every album ever at gmail.com. We have a pretty big backlog of requests. So if you if you sent one in like a month ago and there's still nothing longer. You, and I, I we're working on it. I apologize for not getting back for responding to some of the emails. Just I just get overwhelmed and like, you know, whatever. But they are noted. They are coming up. Uh you know, time. And also the the thing that we won't talk about too much. We're, I'm sure you've noticed if you listen to like every episode, uh, past few episodes, short discographies, very short discographies. Yes. We're doing this is very intentional. Uh, we need to build like we need space. Like man, this takes fucking time. Like I, I, I I'm an idiot. I knew this creating the podcast. So yes, like, this might be hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how we got behind. I don't know either. I thought we were gonna get behind when I took a little trip to new york i thought yeah. that was going to be our downfall yeah but it wasn't i you know what i think it was i think it was uh one week at a time we took an extra week so like, oh yeah it wasn't it was like one one artist we took three weeks to listen to them it was like one artist we took a week and a half 
And another one, we took another week and a half. Oh, okay. So it's like that just built up over the course. And then we just ran out of time, but we're trying to build it back up doing short discographies. We're going to start doing, uh, single album discographies pretty soon. So those will be even shorter episodes, one and dones, um, nice kind of breather. Cause we don't need every episode to be two and a half hours long. Like I'm our, sure our fans are exhausted. Too. Exhausted. And I'm sure no one listens to the full episodes, which I encourage you to not because then we turns I, into this at the end. I think Connie <laughs> listens to the full episodes. You, Connie. Connie's still here. We love you so much. We love you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Connie. Uh, but, uh, yeah, finishing the plugs, um, play- playlist, it's going to be the entirety of the first album and maybe the f- fuck it's going to be the first album. All right. Yeah. In the, in the, in the I'm over here. Like, I know no, not and, even those two songs in the description of where you're listening or watching. You will find speak English or die. I encourage you to listen to it post haste. Uh, and I think that's about it. Uh, ideas for last songs. I'm going to get usually rule of thumb. If uh, you, you know us, I get metal stuff. Mike gets punk stuff. Pretty much. But Mike is obviously the bigger fan here. So he gets last song. There's no debate about it. If that's the case. And I'm going to go kill yourself. Has to be. Nice. And that is the episode. Thank you so much for listening and watching, everybody. See ya.